unbelievable. And they're so pretty. And wow, this is this is really spectacular. Nice surprise for an old boat, isn't she? I mean, it's just just glorious. These are fun. This is a really neat boat. This is just uh, it's just classic. I don't know. Hi there, this is Captain Koo and my old sailing buddy Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. Hey, Captain. Randy, I am way over here in the corner and I'm in a, a desert of sailboats and I found an oasis. You found a navy flag blue hull with a gold How do I strip. keep finding these flag blue hulls? Anyway, it's unbelievable. And they're so pretty. And this is such a classic combination. The blue hull, white boot top, and the green bottom. This boat was built by Dolph LeCompte in the Netherlands. It was designed by, who do you think? Gotta be Bill Tripp. You got it. This is a Bill Tripp LeCompte uh, built uh, boat. And early on... It sounds familiar. Uh, it does. Actually, the same combination went into the magnificent, unbelievable, one only PB. New boats these days, are, they're cutting them away right about here and running it back and they're losing all sorts of wetted surface and they're getting these flat sections up here and they bring the bow straight down, you know, somewhere up here. And look what they do, they'll probably pick up, they'll pick up this much water line and who cares? They're so unappealing. Trip also worked for Phil Rhodes before he went into the military during World War II. And when he got out of the military, he ended up working for Sparkman Stevens. Do you think either of those designers had any influence on, on his pencil when he drew these lines? Oh, for sure, yeah. I think so. Now, we've talked about mushers. We got a good musher here because look how, look how deep she is forward and she's just gonna settle into the next wave. And these has, have historically been reported to have very comfortable rides. She's heavy, she's 16,000 pounds for a 38 footer. Um, and she carries 6,000 pounds of lead encapsulated in her keel. So it's all internal. There's sort of some funny things going on here with the paint and the glass, isn't there? Yeah, it's like a little bit of a ripple. Yeah, well what happened there apparently is that there was, there was some sort of intrusion into the hull and somebody came along and they, they sanded it over and fined it up. Then they painted it and they didn't do a great job of fairing that one spot, but there's something called print through. Print through on the early, early fiberglass boats, when they put the gel coat in the, in the mold and then put the cloth right on top of it, sometimes it would not, the gel coat wouldn't be thick enough and you can actually look and see the pattern of that weave. Look at all the through hulls. Tripp was into racing. Uh, his, one of his most famous racing boats was uh, one called uh, Ondine, which set all sorts of records. And actually she was um, kind of the big sister to the PB. You know what that is? A little speedometer. That's, that's our, our knot meter, our knot meter right there. And as the water comes by, that's gonna spin that and it's gonna make little ticks on your, on your meter up on the boat and it'll tell you how fast you're going through the water. From the look of the stains around here, this is gonna be the exhaust from the engine. This owner hasn't raced the boat. Obviously he's left this three-bladed prop on. This is gonna give you a lot of power, get through some tough currents, uh, through some heavy waves and so forth. Tripp did one thing here. Uh, he's trying to, he's just starting to shorten up the whole keel and he's tucking this rudder in a little further than they used to be on, on older designs. Um, and so what are the implications of that? Just trying to cut down a wetted surface. This is Tripp's counter, kind of a signature of his. It's a fairly long counter, but it's fairly low. If uh, this were a Sparkman Stevens design, this would swoop right up and probably, oh, I don't know, finish out here somewhere. It would just be a little sharper. And then he also liked to cut the transom off, if you will, and give it this flat signature look. Here's our exhaust for the engine right here. That, I don't know what that other one was over there. Oh, this is nice too. You see, there's a number of these along here and these are for the scuppers and they have separate drains right in the, in the waterways alongside the tow rail. And those fill up with water and then rainwater or anything and they come out here. Is that a big deal? Yes, because if they just overflow the, the tow rail, they're gonna drip down here and you're gonna have constant drips on your boat and it's not very pretty. That's unsightly. Very unsightly. You can see the, catch the reflection of the light here. You see how it's kind of wiggly? 
That's the print, that's the print through. If, if it was, didn't have the print through, that light that's on the ceiling of this building would not be all kind of squiggly. Here's our depth sounder down here, and they've been very careful not to paint the face of the depth sounder. I see a little hole here. What do you suppose that might be for? I'm gonna guess it's a drain for a, uh, an anchor locker. For Rande, that is incorrect. No, this boat has a deck washing ah, pump. So and salt water. So salt water is going to be sucked up in here, go through the deck washing pump, and you'll pump it out up on deck there. Huh. Wow, this is this is really spectacular. I think we better go topside. What do you say? Yeah, let's do it. We love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're going to get recommended to more people, and so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing, so every little bit helps. Thanks again. Hey, Randy. Hey. Hey, buddy. Here we are again. This is a pretty nice surprise for an old boat, isn't she? Getting back to the story on uh, on Dolph LeCompte, LeCompte's first boat was called a Medalist, Medalist 33, which was kind of a cool little boat. It looked like if you took the PB and kind of went like that, then they followed that up with the Northeast 38 in 62. The boat that we're on today was built in 1964. And the PB was, was uh, built and designed and built in 1965 itself. It's fun being on this boat for me because it's just like being on the PB again. This is a really solid boat. Uh, solid fiberglass hull all the way up, as we mentioned. And the decks are Airx uh, foam cord, uh, glass on top, glass below, sandwich construction. You're going to see some tired paint. The decks have been repainted a few times. Some good sanding and, and uh, happy varnish would make to bring this back. The cockpit is enormous. Look at the size of this cockpit. And they've got these great little seat cushions back here. Can you see these? Yeah, those are pretty dressy. Yeah, very dressy. And this thing comes up and there's actually a, a wooden seat back behind it. Oh, yeah. There, how do you like that? Yeah, very nice. Just before these boats came out in the early 60s, they were still building wooden boats. The very famous Sparkman Stevens wooden boat called Finisterre had just completed winning the Bermuda race three times. And so a lot of the thinking there kind of spun off. Designers would look at that and say, uh, that's kind of cool. What, what can we steal from that? What can we do with that sort of thing? This is a keel, full keel boat, as we've seen, not a centerboarder. And centerboarders were great, but Finisterre, she did so well winning three Bermudas in a row. Nobody's done that yet today. Uh, <coughs> that um, they had to change the, the, the rules. So suddenly, little fat, flat, chubby uh, uh, cruising boats uh, with centerboards were penalized. So then people started putting in keels. This is a blue water boat. If anybody has any questions, no question at all. This boat will take you. She's strong, she's tough. Here's your, the uh, backstay fitting for your uh, main mist. That's gonna come right down. Now remember the, the, the uh, mizzen is right here beside me. So the mizzen comes up backstay for the mainmast is going to come down at this angle and that's the angle right up to the top of the mast if you could see that. Another nice feature that uh, they did, I'm, I'm sad to see this, but uh, were the teak uh, cleats with these fittings in here. This would be easy to fix up with a, a, a new fresh piece of teak. There's a nice one right by your feet. Looks like Sea Dog got a hold of that one. It does. I think Sea Dog might have. Uh, and we apologize that Sea Dog's not here today by the way. Sea Dog, Dog stayed in bed this morning. Major stainless steel work on these boats. The Dutch did a great job. Uh, these stanchions are really wicked tough. Uh, the, uh, look at the fittings here for the uh, chocks on the, on the taffrail here. Looks familiar. Very familiar, yes, exactly. <laughs> now, the one thing we didn't have that they have on this particular boat is a uh, drop-down ladder. Oh, you know what we're missing that we had on the PB? Yes, there's no boomkin. No boomkin. We like boomkin. <laughs> this wheel brings back memories. Now, on the PB, we had the same thing, except it was bigger. He's got his navigation stuff, his electronic navigation. This is nice, too, nice size. This is a Garmin. Oh, which one is this? This is a mapping uh, tool here. Over here on this side, he's got his autopilot. And you can see the wheel on the uh, outside of this, or the inside of this wheel here is what's going to control it. I love this compass. This is just a beauty. The nice thing about it is you can see it from any place in the boat. And it still has a light. That whole compass will glow red. Uh, it's got a VHF uh, remote phone up here, uh, down in the cockpit. That's nice and handy. Yeah, and up on the dashboard here are our wind instruments. This is the main sheet. And you should feel the weight on this thing. The upper block with the, the two shivs in it is all rubber coated. 
This again is a system similar to Avatar's. Yep. Uh, because our main was so much bigger, we actually had a, a, a winch down here. But this is not that big. You so. like the combings? The combings are good. Uh, you know, it's a pretty high combing, but I'm sitting on a pretty fat cushion here. So it would be even better without the cushion. This is our early little snooze for the captain. Look at that. I mean, you're in the danger zone. I, I mean, how good is this? Look at the width on either side of this. I'm not just going to fall off. Oh, here we go. It's a huge locker. It goes way back underneath Randy's feet there. And is there a panel to get at the engine? It kind of seems like. So you could step down in here, remove all of these life jackets and everything, and step right in there, and you're going to have the whole engine yeah. access to you. And I think there's also a uh, another access from inside near the galley. Okay. Uh, remembering too that this boat, this engine has been reversed and so therefore it has a oh a v drive you get the engine further aft here yep. get the weight where they want the weight if you try to have the shaft going the whole way so you'd have to have the engine further up and it would invade the cabin here's something we've never seen pretty certain this is your gear shift knob right here this would be forward neutral and then reverse I they call that a four on the floor <laughs> it's a it is a three on the floor forward <laughs> reverse and neutral and then you've got uh your speedo right here and that's that just you can see there's a little groove here where that's going to slide up and down yeah and then you'll know that at the bottom it's low and up here you're going really fast there we go okay now we've got some batteries down here well see these are 21 here i think down here system for the starting battery and we'll find the house batteries in underneath the nav station but this is another huge sail locker this is part of the uh, refrigeration system all those little fins you see there are, to, are for cooling the coolant that uh, is compressed by a compressor on the front of the engine. Let's just take a peek at the, the Bariant 28 winches here and a set of self-tailing back here beside the uh, helmsman. So if you're just cruising, you can use the self-tailers and the helmsman can handle those themselves. And if you're racing, you've got the big 28s forward. <laughs> Look at this. Nice. This practically comes up to my armpits. <laughs> this is the best height stanchion we've seen yet. Hey, notice, look at my walkways here. Now we got the full width of the CQ here. Now this is a real Lacombe special right here. These, these wind vents, they're made out of fiberglass and we had them on the PB, but they were twice the height. They were giant. They looked like they came off a steamship almost. <laughs> and uh, they, they moved an incredible volume of air. And these are big too. And these are gonna bring a lot of air through the boat. And we've walked by, by the way, two big hatches uh, with uh, translucent plastic on top of them. And it's gonna let a lot of sunlight into uh, the cabin. You can see all this, this paint is sort of dried out and it's cooked. And we've seen that, you know, it's almost like the boat's been sitting in a barn somewhere. Replacement costs from the last surveyor on this boat was $575,000. Oh, wow. So buy the boat, throw a little paint on it. You know, you've got a pretty swell boat. Big ideal windlass up here. Again, the same thing we had on the, on the and this is just set for rope. Uh, so you bring in most of the rope on this and this will have a short piece of chain uh, just to, to uh, keep the rope from getting cut. And this is a small enough anchor maybe I can't know if I can read that, 25 pounds or so for that CQR, that's going to be easy enough to pull up. Look at the molded in the headpiece, nose, right? The nose piece, yeah. Yeah, look at that, just beautiful. Here's the switch to run the windlass right there. There's your button. And here's a really nice old school piece here. This is a solid piece of wood right here. And on it is the uh, stainless uh, gooseneck fitting combination. This goes in onto, onto a piece on the mast, and this is where you put a handle to turn this. It's geared inside here, and when you turn the handle on here, this whole boom will rotate, and it will wrap the mainsail right around it. We've got handrails, we like those. Here's a hole here. The boat used to have a stove because all these came with wonderful fireplaces with Dutch Delft tiles on them. It was just part of the mark of getting a Lacombe boat and somebody's removed it, unfortunately. This isn't chrome, these are all stainless pieces here, like the, the uh, port surrounds. I noticed a little crazing at the other windows behind, right behind you. They've done this kind of a la Hinkley, where they, uh, you see, there's no outside frame to it, so they've buried in from the inside, so it gets sandwiched that way, 
as opposed to being sandwiched from the outside. Let's take a walk below. Before you come down, I want you to notice something. What do you think about that companionway? Uh, they supersized it. It is supersized. I don't know why. Uh, I have to say, it's, in a way, it's kind of nice. Uh, as long as you keep your hatchboards handy and you can get them in fast, it'd be great. But of course, uh, I mean, you, have a, you have a pretty big bridge deck here, so. Well, it's a good sized bridge deck, uh, but if you get a big poop in there of, of water coming right over the, the transom, you know, you've got to be prepared and you're going to put the washboards in ahead of time. Come on down, buddy. Oh, thanks. Uh, now, listen, this. <laughs> This is a really neat boat. I think this was all African mahogany. I don't think this is teak in here, but uh, it has a dark richness to it that is just so wonderful. I mean, it's just, just glorious. Now, while you were up there fiddling around the cockpit, I was curious about these settees. I pulled this one out, and you know what? I still have another two or three inches to go. Now, this boat will sleep six people one two three four and there's two more up forward look at the ceilings on the boat all all nicely varnished mahogany uh there's a lot of touch up around the boat that needs to be done cut some a number of weekend projects for the weekend warrior look at the door slide right out that's a nice look at this look at the depth on that drawer huh uh and just slides right in and out um all your spare stuff you need so the overhead is interesting They've used this perforated, <laughs> that just allows air to flow through in behind there. And it's solid, it's a solid material. It's a, I, I can't say the word. I'm gonna show you a galley. We haven't seen this much counter space in a boat anywhere near the size, have we? No. And what, again, what they did back in those days a lot, they would often come down, you'd find the refrigerator running along this side of the, of the cabin, and there was no chart table of any sort. And in this boat, they just carried the whole, the whole McGonagall right across, uh, right across the way here. Just take a peek down in this, this endless well, and there is your freezer, and you can see the holding place for the Adler Barber uh, system. Little racks of storage in behind this, and we have underneath the step here, again, a little too close for my liking, but all of our circuit breakers and a whole series of battery sw uh, switches. In the old days, they would use, have the refrigeration set up here, and this would be, uh, you'd use the top of the refrigerator. So on this particular boat, they've created this little spot to give you a uh, chart table area. So how are you supposed to sit there? Uh, how would you sit here? Yeah. Well, you would sit here. It seems like you're facing the wrong way. Uh, you would sit here like so. Uh, it's, it, it's not the best, but underneath this little chart table, you see we've got uh, room for little charts. So, there's a panel that can go away, and we've got uh, some storage for miscellaneous gear on one side, a two burner, this is propane, and it's gimbaled, so, you know, you clear these pieces away when you don't need them, and uh, you've got a nice two burner range. Oh. They apparently have places for food, and, well, there's your favorite giant locker. Two sinks, pretty, here's the center line of the boat, so we're... Pretty close to that, uh, though uh, it was rumored that some of these boats needed to have the uh, sink drains shut off when you were sailing uh. because they would back up. Both this and the head will have a similar problem. We've got a very deep bilge, so any water you get in this boat is going to find that bilge and uh, get pumped out. See the other float switch? Yep. That float switch is for an alarm bell. And the alarm bell goes off when the pump's not pumping out or it's jammed up with stuff, gunk in the bilge. And the alarm is like no other you have on the boat. And it sounds like a fire engine in your bilge. Light sanding, coat of varnish, and it's going to be just as beautiful as the million dollar boat. Okay, let me show you the size of this table. Look at that. This fiddle will come out like so and sit down in there. Now coming forward to my, to my left here. Uh, is a hole in the boat area. This had a, a, a little pit down here, you can't quite see it, but down in there you would have the classic Le Comte fireplace. Would you pop a stove back in there? Oh, in a nanosecond. Yeah. <laughs> There's something about a, the woodwork on these Le Comte boats, when you have an open fireplace going and the flame and the light from the flame 
this wood just starts to glow. Come on in. Uh, good size head. And what they've done, they've dressed the head around the mask, so you don't have that big shiny white mask sitting in your face in the cabin, right? Oh, more, more storage. It's got water, extra water storage in there. Uh, oh, nicely put in place. More storage. And I love these on every boat, don't I? Yep. Little drawer. Everybody gets their own drawer. This is the sump, and we don't like that, do we? No. This was the same thing we had on the PB2. They used the bilge for the shower sump. Yep. And uh, you really just need to put a little box down there, a little collection thing, and collect it and pipe it overboard. And that's so it can control the gray water so you don't get mold and hair and all oh, that. Oh, exactly. We have V-Birth. I'm so tired of talking about V-Birth all the time because you think, gee, just another V-Birth. Well, this has got a nice filler piece in it. Nice cabin. We have nice uh, ceilings all around, all mahogany stained. Uh, I see some work that needs to be done up here underneath this this uh, uh, headliner here. This woodwork it all looks good. There's no real signs of hard leaking. Uh, again, those wonderful stainless ports. And right beside here is one of the bigger storage areas. Can you see down in there? Yep. Look at that. The, side, the height of this berth I like too. See, it's a little lower than some. And even the seat in between here is... Uh, is comfortable and a good place to get yourself wedged. And I'm sorry, there's no, no spare head for you, buddy. <laughs> We've just had a, a, a multi-team inspection here of this piece, and you can see that all right? Yep. This, we believe, is the washdown pump. And we saw the washdown uh, yep. spigot up on deck, didn't we? Okay, Randy. Let's see it. I'm doing it. I'm going for it. Okay. Ah. Now, first of all, I sit. the first thing I see is I sit here and I'm not bunking my head okay on uh, anything right in here so he's left me a little room and if i didn't have this box on the back of my head that you constructed for me oh this is okay buddy I've got this huge hatch one of the bigger hatches we've seen on a boat it's translucent it's going to let some sunlight in but not too much i've got a cross ventilation with the the two stainless uh portholes the owner here has also put a fan in forward and right behind that green curtain we're going to find the chain locker thanks for coming down and this has been a wonderful trip sit down memory lane yeah. in a lecompte northeast 38 good night Bye. all right randy hey oh you know where we are right now uh Massachusetts somewhere. Well, that's close enough, but we're actually in the town of Amesbury. This is called the Alliance Park, and uh, it's where one of the first frigates of the Continental Congress was built. We're definitely in the water area and, and, and of a boat mine, but the one we saw today was not a frigate, but it was very near to my heart. And when you get on this boat, it's just like the PB has been scrunched down a little bit. We went below and all that African cherry mahogany is down there. 38 foot boat with an almost 11 foot beam, 10 foot 11. Giant cockpit. Uh, know what you got? Two masts. This boat is priced incredibly well for what you're going to see. She's not without some flaws, but that's going to be part of the love that the new owner is going to bring to the boat. How would you rate it? I want you to help me here a little bit. Ooh. And now you know that you rubbed up against a Lecompte trip boat for how many years? Uh, at least eight. So you know what we looked at? You yeah. had a, there was some symbiotic yeah. kind of sensation there maybe? Oh yeah, yeah. And what do you think? What did you think? Did you like the boat? Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Would you buy the boat if you didn't have a boat? I would definitely consider that boat. She's gonna get a 10. Yeah. She floats, I know that boat floats. And I know that with that heritage, you gotta give five to Dolph, I gotta give five to Trip. That's another 10, so we're up to 20. I'm gonna give it another five, just because uh, it would really be a joy to own. This is a little unusual, but I'm gonna give it another five because you're gonna to have to do some work to her and make that boat yours. So we're gonna give this boat 30 today. What do you think? I'd throw on another four because Ooh. I think it is your kind of boat. It's a manageable PB. All right, I'll take your four and we'll take it to 34. Thank you, Randy, for putting this together and for the show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, fan.
If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. Ha, 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 ha.